That was a mango. Yeah, beware of mangoes. Hi everyone, it's Melissa, your plantita abogada here at Tasteful Nudes, coming to you today with my birthday plant haul video. So birthday video of plants that were unboxed because I could not set up a camera and wait and you know do the whole unboxing thing. I just couldn't, I couldn't. <laughs> Anyway, today's episode is going to be a fun one if you are a Hoya lover or an Anthurium lover. Before we get started, I'll go rush through my three disclaimers really quick. One, KKB tayo, kanya kanyang bayad. For our Westerner friends, it means we each pay our own way. Spend prudently, plants are gorgeous, we don't want to spend our rent money, okay? I ain't paying any plant child support. <laughs> Number two, I'm not an expert, so please don't cite me as one. Any factual information that I do provide to you, I'll provide on the screen as well as in the description box down below. And then number three, find the experts in your community who can back up the information I provide you. The experts in your community are people who actually have these plants, who grow them, who can tell you where to find them. I mean, information that is specifically tailored to you. Those are the people you want to find. Information I'm providing is general and based on my own personal experiences and observations. So it's best to get a second opinion and make sure that our plants will flourish under each of our care. <laughs> okay, with that being said, I definitely felt the plant love on my birthday. So I received over hundreds of notifications of greetings for my birthday, which is fantastic. Thank you so much. If I haven't gone to you yet, because I am still responding to <laughs> these birthday greetings, I'm sorry, but thank you. I'll get to you. I will, I promise. These guys, my husband came in one day. I was like, oh, hey happy birthday and I'm like oh cool what is it because I had no idea who's buying me a present I really try not to give him information about things to buy me because I don't know what I want anymore I think I have everything that I want and then he always comes up with something that I didn't realize I needed so that's what this episode is about and you know a friend who came through with something pretty awesome as well so if you're a Hoya lover let's get started on this plant haul really quick so this my friends who are you oh this is a really nice one let me get my notes on this one this is the Hoya irisy and it is a fantastic plant the leaves have these beautiful veins I think that come out from the center and I mean it just it really is a stunner and it shows up on all the leaves and good it's a good thing because I saw the picture of the flower while I was researching it and I, I was like oh my god these are really nice and my husband's was like what do they look like and I stared at him I'm like what do you mean do you not know what they look like he's like no I bought it for the leaves <laughs> you know practical guy when the flowers are gone you want to appreciate the leaves right yeah so the flowers for these are actually a neon green to yellow um, color and of course as a wax plant the flowers are those stars five lobe stars and it appears waxy it's the neon green that gets me it's just fantastic it's gorgeous this plant is actually named after the collector's sister iris so iris a it actually grows as an epiphytic shrub so unlike other Hoyas like the Buotii, which will actually climb up on a trellis and go crazy. This one grows as a shrub. I don't think I have a Hoya that grows as a shrub just yet. So that's pretty interesting. That's going to be an interesting experience for me too. According to my notes, and this is interesting, I'll, I'll read it. According to Dale Kloppenberg, right? It was found growing on decaying tree stumps with some individuals attached to live tree trunks. And that was two meters off the ground. It's kind of interesting that these guys will grow as shrubs, you know, rather than vines on tree stumps. So I'm gonna have to be quite smart about the media for this guy, especially for here where I'm at, where we've got like a, not so many trees. You know, I mean, we got a lot of trees, but not what this is accustomed to. Okay, good. The media is still moist. Fantastic. I'll go ahead and take care of that guy and I'll make sure that we have the proper 
growing media for this area. I'm thinking maybe a chunkier mix mixed in with what she has right now. Something maybe with acacia bark, tree, tree bark again, to give it the conditions that it's used to growing in. So this plant right here, this is a Hoya Boutii. It's not Boutii, it's not B-O-U, it's B-U-O-T-I-I, -I, so Boutii. <laughs> and this I have, this is really nice. This is another endemic plant to the Philippines. The flowers for this are also five lobed, really pretty, yellow, right? And if I'm remembering correctly, it's got middle, a middle that is red or maroon. But what's really, really spectacular about this plant is that its flowers are fuzzy. I mean, just so gorgeous, really. It looks so luxurious and decadent and you just wanna have more of them. And we do, I don't know if you remember my Hoya episode. It was the very, very last plant um, in the episode. And we had it growing on a trellis. It had so many flowers. I mean, this thing is a grower and a shower. You want to have this in your area because it will give you lots of flowers. And it actually gave us three seed pods um, while it was thriving really well. So the trellis has fallen apart. There's still a big pool where this is at. And we do still have some Buotei on that. But it's just not as fantastic as it used to be. It's not as dense as it used to be. Yeah, it was really, really nice. So the seed pods come out looking like, um, I don't know if you've seen vanilla bean. So it's a long bean looking thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's what these seed pods look like. Those long bean things. And we've had three of them. We've never caught, <laughs> we've never known when the right time to take it was. So whenever we'd come back to it, it would have already exploded and no more seeds, right? So I have not experienced propagating this by seed just yet, but it's definitely an option because it is such a giving and easy plant. Definitely something I would recommend and something I'm happy to have a second one of because I could put it here um, at the porch and let it climb. I would probably enjoy seeing it just climb along the poles. There's a really nice um, looking leaf here and I want to pull that out and make sure that I present it to you at the same time as the other one. At, oh yeah, 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 okay, good. Good, 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 good. So that guy and not you, maybe you, definitely you, here we go. So these two, these two are Hoya bengatensis. And if you're familiar with Hoyas, you'll recognize these as, you know, some of the really oldest Hoyas that have been around. According to my research, it's been around since at least 1904, introduced to Botanical Society in 1906. And I mean, you know, it, it's the grandparent Hoya. Yeah, the one, at least the one as far as collecting is concerned. So these two, they're both the same thing. Hoya bengatensis, right? But when my husband ordered it, he ordered it as Hoya bengatensis orange and Hoya bengatensis red. And I was just like, oh, oh, what's going on here? And when it's delivered, the labels actually have it down as Hoya bengatensis and Hoya bengatensis long leaves. And I was like, what is going on? You know, it's the same plant. You look at them, right? No flowers yet, um, but it's definitely the same plant. The leaves feel the same. You know, they look the same, but there is a difference. This guy does have, oh no, oh no, when did that happen? Poor leaf. Okay, anyway, this guy does have longer leaves. I mean, just narrower. There we go. That's the word we're looking for, narrower, right? And definitely longer. So I looked it up. And Bengatensis, along with being one of the oldest Hoya um, in people's collections, is also a Hoya, while endemic to the Philippines, is one that's found in the north of the Philippines, in Luzon, as well as in the south of the Philippines, in Davao or Samar, right? Mindanao. So we've got the top and the bottom, and these two guys are found in both places. I'm like, okay, 
I think I got it. I think I know why there are two bengatensis. It's morphology, right? So when you look at these flowers, they look almost exactly alike. And you wonder if your eyes are playing tricks on you because one is definitely orange with a red corona, which is that red star in the middle of the other star, right? That's the corona. The thing is this long leafed one actually comes out redder, like a dark reddish orange. I mean, the red is very obvious. So likely morphological changes is my guess because the mother plants were discovered in different parts of the country. Of course, they have different growing conditions. So they have, probably have different growing media, different trees, different lighting conditions. Yeah, that over time would explain the physical differences between these two. And just in case anyone is wondering, right? Because you know I have to cover all my bases. So, morphology, right? Here we go. According to Post-Harvest Physiology and Biochemistry of Fruits and Vegetables on Science, a journal on sciencedirect.com, morphology relates to the study of the physical form and external structure of plants. That is what morphology is. It's the outside appearance. We are judging the book by its cover. That's what's happening. But in contrast to plant anatomy, plant anatomy is actually the study of the internal plant structure. <laughs> so today we all learned something. Yeah. So that's the Hoya bengatensis and Hoya bengatensis narrow leaf or red flower, whichever one. Yeah, I'll update you guys when that finally happens. Very excited for that. Why did I close my notes? I'll need this eventually. This guy, this beautiful guy right here, I'm just so enamored by it. He really knows what I like. This guy is not a Hoya. This guy is a Dishidia. Dishidiopsis. This is a Dishidia parasitica. And I don't know why it's called parasitica because when I researched the growing conditions on this thing, nothing indicating that it would be a parasite. Um, it is epiphytic, so it does grow on trees. But aside from that, I mean, it's just a, a fantastic little plant. It's got those nice long leaves, um, really narrow, and they actually have these, um, what is it called? Like, like, like that thing. So <laughs> it's kind of folded in on itself. You've got that little funnel, if you want to call it that, in the middle. It's really nice. It feels kind of like a succulent. Not so much hoya -y where it feels thinner and smoother, but this is really pretty. I do not see any flowers. Oh no, I have a broken piece. Okay, I'm gonna have to learn how to propagate this because there's one part that's broken. That's beside the point. Getting back to the flowers. The flowers on this thing, are really really pretty and I can't wait so they show up as red bulbs so yeah that's it <laughs> they're just red bulbs they never open now this plant which is endemic to Luzon is probably going to have to be treated much like my other Dishidias um, and probably my Hoyas the only difference I would consider in the care for this guy is not giving it as much sun as I would the Hoyas because I do like to give some of my Hoyas some sun stress. It makes their colors redder or oranger. It's really, really pretty. And I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. But this guy I'll probably keep in bright and direct to shadier conditions and definitely in a thicker, um, chunkier mix, kind of like the first Hoya, the Iris A, that we talked about, because it probably deserves to be in something that's woodier. Now, speaking about sun stress, this is that plant I was talking about. Check those dark leaves out, right? Check that out. Yes. Really, really pretty. Um, I would say that this is a result of sun stress just because the other leaves are not dark like this one is, right? Really, really pretty. The name of this Hoya, in case anybody is wondering, before I wander off in my own little world, is Hoya S.P. Gagayan. And I see here that she gave this for free. 
So according to the seller, my husband's seller, this is an unknown species from Cagayan. So I don't have much to go by on this guy. SP Cagayan and I'll have to keep you guys posted. There's got to be a secret to making this one gorgeous like this. So this next plant, this plant is amazing. I really, I wanted it since I saw it and I'm telling you, I know it doesn't look like much right now, but this is going to be a fantastic plant and I'm so excited for it. This my friends is the Hoya Medusa. Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> and this is better known in the Hoya market as Cotton Bell, but it's since been published, it's been made an honest plant and it has its name that reflects it better. So the leaves are kind of similar to the Iris A. It's not as Venus as the Iris A is, it has that same texture though. It's got these gorgeous pointed leaves. Yes. It's kind of reminiscent of the fishtail or the, the mermaid tail Hoya. You know how it has those things at the very end? How it has that. The polyneura. So it's, it's reminiscent of the polyneura with those pretty little extended ends. The tips. Really nice. I can't wait to see a flower. So the flower is what help give it its name. According to Hoya Obsession, a, a website I found, all Hoyas share three characteristics. One, they have that five point corona. Corona is that middle star in the middle of the bigger star that you see on a flower, a Hoya flower. Number two is that they all ha come off of, all the flowers come off of peduncles, which is, I guess, which they called umbel inflorescence yeah and then number three is that all their flowers have this waxy appearance to it i completely agree there where medusa comes in differently is that the corona so that middle um that middle star that i was mentioning earlier its corona is actually like only starts out as a bud like this and it's serpentine in appearance so you've got all of these wavy arms, tentacle looking arms in the middle, that corona before it opens and retains that, that those wavy arms and everything. But first it looks like a head, a, a head with snakes on it. Medusa. I'm just very, very pleased with this naming and it is so appropriate and so perfect really. And I'm truly a fan. It does, since it does grow in shrub like conditions, same as that guy. I'm gonna have to read a little bit more and try to provide it what it needs because I really, really want this to flourish. And I really, really wanna see those flowers. I mean, the flowers are to die for and I would love to have them um, pictured and documented in my garden. I'll put you right here so that you can stand up, yay. Now, finally, the last plant of my birthday plant haul. Actually, there are two but the other plant is going to be part of, an, of a future episode. So I don't want to ruin that surprise. I'll just say thank you, Jan. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the plant. So the last plant on my list. If you've ever watched Game of Thrones, if you've ever watched Pete's Dragon, if you've ever watched Dungeons and Dragons, here we go. <laughs> this is an Anthurium Draconopterum. Woo! Draconopterum. Okay, so the Draco part, if you watched Harry Potter, you know Draco refers to dragon. Yes, yeah, fine. And Tarum refers to winged, right? And here we got our little winged dragon. Really, really pretty, don't you think? I love it. Um, it's my second one. <laughs> Since I need to be completely honest, it's my second one. The first one I got was at a crazy, crazy price. And it was during the pandemic, so you know the price was obscene. I got it, and it didn't last very long. I don't want to say I want to say it didn't even last a week. It is that bad? Um, it was instantly droopy, and I'm like, oh no, it's my weather conditions. It's got to be me. I put it in a little vacuum. Um, I put it in an ICU, 
yeah and that didn't work either so stem rot root I don't need I don't even remember if there were roots I know that there was stem rot I'm just here like what is going on so I said no more Dracos I'm not doing any more Dracos they're heartbreakers I ain't doing it and a friend of mine teased me about it and sure enough my husband yesterday was like we got appointments to go to but we have something really important to pick up at the bus station and I'm like okay let's go and this was one of the two at the bus station <laughs> this Draco and I'm really confident in this one unlike my first one because we've got this little growth that came out and I mean if that's not a sign of it being established and acclimated to the Philippine climate I don't know what is okay at this point yay we got this guy and we've got a Draco and we'll take lots of good care of it and you know keep it happy if you've watched those dragon movies that I referred to at the beginning you know you gotta name your dragon right <laughs> and this guy's name is a lab boy or wanderer so thank you very much to my wandering friend for another chance at owning a Draco and thank you guys for coming along for my birthday haul <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this episode, feel free to give it a like. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And click that notification bell so you get notified of future content. If there's something here that you have questions about or if you think that I need to absolutely know about, leave me a comment. I would love to find out more. Yeah, like I said, at this point I feel like I have all the plants I want. So I, at this point, it's, it's like, okay, well, what else is out there? You guys, you guys let me know what's out there, okay? <laughs> if you miss me during the week, check me out on Facebook. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes. Finally, if you just want to look at pretty pictures or video right before you go to bed, check me out on Instagram. I'm there as Tasteful Nodes as well. Okay, guys, until next time, so ulitin. Keep your notes classy and tasteful. Bye.